close crush injuries is exactly what it sounds like. That means that um, a part of your body was crushed between machinery or two big objects or heavy objects. And as a result, there was a lot of damage, rupture, and possibly broken bones depending on the site. Um, and a crush injury will most definitely at least lead to uh, a hematoma. If it's uh, in the arm and you have a crush injury on your forearm, that's going to lead to a hematoma for sure. Uh, blast injuries, like it says here, it can include open and closed wound types. It depends on the blast, what kind of blast, the shrapnel that was with it, was there shrapnel, shrapnel. It's a lot of factors always play. See, potential for massive internal damage is higher than with direct force. So with the blast injury, I uh, let me see. Some of you guys, one of you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking there's, uh, I didn't, there's four phases to a blast in, and injury. There's a, so initially when, a, let's say a bomb goes off, right? If a bomb goes off, initially that, that, that force, that wave force from the blast itself will get to you before any objects or a, any heat does. So the actual blast injury creates a force, like a wind, like a wave force. That's the first phase. The second phase is the shrapnel actually hitting the body. So whatever got blown up, the second phase is shrapnel actually hitting the body. The third phase is the physical person hitting the ground or the wall from the blast injury. And the fourth phase should be environmental factors, smoke, uh, flames, um, whatever uh, happened because of the bomb, like after the, after the fact. And then, of course, it, it depends on where you are. Are you in a factory, um, what the bomb was made of, all those, all those things come into account for the, the environmental phase. So these are all different types of clothes injuries. You guys can see out of all these four, which one would you think could be could have the highest potential for your patient to bleed out? I'll pick on somebody. See, David, you're the first one on here. David, uh, out of these out of these five, which one do you think um, would have the highest potential for a patient to bleed out severely? What do you think? Oh, oh man, I really want to say the uh, the rupture of a hollow organ. Rupture of a hollow organ. No, anybody else want to want to give it a shot? Injury of a solid organ. Yes, and why is that? Why do you think that is? Because if like... it's solid, I would guess there's more blood in there. Exactly. Yes, your hollow organs are less vascular, meaning they have less vessels that that feed it blood. Your solid organs need more blood, um, so therefore they're more vascular. So your patient, if they have a liver, a puncture or laceration of a liver, your liver is very vascular, and you, you have the potential to bleed out more with this than any of these other injuries. Um, now, anybody else, who, what can this right here, internal laceration and puncture, so the rib being, the rib being punctured right here, or broken, not punctured, but broken, what can that potentially lead to? What kind of shock can that lead to? Let's see, Andrew, I'm gonna pick on you for this one. So your patient has a broken rib. This is your patient right here. Mm -hmm. what, what can happen as a result? And then if you can't even tell me what kind of shock can form. Well, uh, I mean, if the rib broke and it punctured a lung, that's most likely a spontaneous hemothorax, but as for the shock, I'm not too sure on which type of shock. I know it's not infection, so it might be um, maybe pulmonary. Um, so you're partially right with the first part. So a spontaneous pneumothorax means that it happens spontaneously because of nothing. Uh, there was really no damage, no physical, nothing happened. Uh, uh, Your patient spontaneous. So that's spontaneous. That means it just occurred. This 
can actually lead to just a, a regular pneumothorax, which can then oh, develop okay. into a tension pneumothorax. And if a tension pneumothorax progresses, what happens is your thoracic cavity builds up with pressure right on the outside of the lung. That pressure will collapse your lung so that lung is, is almost not even good, not even functioning. On top of that, if the tension pneumothorax continues, it can apply pressure to the heart itself. So if the heart itself is, is uh, obstructed, is not as being pushed down upon, then it can't, it can't expand and contract adequately, right? And that's called obstructive shock. So when, it, when there's an outside force not allowing the heart to contract and expand, it's called obstructive shock because the heart is being obstructed from doing its job right. Okay. Uh, okay. Good try though. You got you got it you got half of it right. So that's cool. That's good. Okay. Oh, give me a second, guys. I'll be right back in like one minute. All right, I'm back, guys. Okay, let's keep going with this. All right, bruising. Uh, what did I say is a fancy word for bruising? And somebody spit it out. Contusion. Contusion. And what is the word for a really, really big bruise? Hematosis. Hematoma, perfect, awesome. Now the biggest thing with the hematoma is that it's, it's a really big bruise. So what happens with, with bruising and, or contusions, bruising, contusions? And, um, you have swelling, right? You have a pulling of blood. Well, if that occurs at a, at a bigger level or in a bigger area, which is a hematoma, that bruising and swelling can obstruct blood flow and cause more tissue damage. So that's why hematomas tend to kind of be a big deal sometimes. Okay, so bruising may be an uh, indication of internal injury or internal bleeding. So yeah, so if you ever see as, uh, a bruising or discoloration, especially in the abdomen, it's, a, it's, a, it's um, good to suspect that there may be a rupture or a laceration in an organ in that area, in that abdominal cavity. And again, the, the mechanism of injury is the picture that you see. So if I were to walk up to a car accident, as I'm walking up to the car accident, I see a 24-year-old female that is hunched over the steering wheel and they have a broken window shield or it's cracked or shattered. When I take that patient and I evaluate that patient, I'm going to assume that if they have bruising in their abdomen, that the mechanism of injury was that steering wheel. And if the patient was, if there was enough force to hunch that patient over the steering wheel and shatter that window shield, then I'm going to suspect that there could be pretty bad bleeding in this patient, hemorrhage. Again, they have internal hemorrhage, um, and I should be prepared to treat this patient for shock because of the mechanism of injury and what I see on the patient themselves. Crush injuries are difficult to identify. See patient care. So of course, especially during trauma situations, you want to take standard precautions, BSI. You don't want to get any blood on you. And we always, always want to make sure the patient's airway is patent. Um, they're breathing, they're breathing adequately, and they actually have a they actually have circulation. We want we don't want to let any horrible looking injuries get in the way of us making sure that our patient is alive and it's going to stay alive. So always 
go back to your ABCs. Always reassess that. Even if it's at a glance, just to look at your patient real quick while you're treating the patient. Um, if you're like, let's say, for example, you're, you're stuck on a uh, on an injury and you're you're bandaging the patient. You don't want to. You always want to kind of keep the patient's mental status and airway, breathing, and circulation in mind at the same time. So always manage as if there is internal bleeding and shock if there is any possibility of internal bleeding or internal injuries. All right, so now we're going to open wounds. We should know what that is by this point. So all of these are different types of open wounds. And I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a few seconds. If you don't have these, please write them down. Abrasion is a fancy word for a scrape. That just means scrape. A portion of the skin was scraped away. A good example of this would be um, a person that would be riding a motorcycle. If they weren't wearing a shirt or they were just wearing a tank top and they fell off the bike as they were driving it and slid on the pavement, they would have a pretty bad abrasion on their body, on the torso. A laceration uh, means a cut. So and it's, uh, it's just a fancy word for a cut. That's all that means. Penetrating trauma and punctures. That was pretty self-explanatory. That means something went through the patient. When you hear the word of avulsions, avulsions and amputations are kind of similar to where avulsions means that there's a tear, like a, a, a piece of tissue got torn off the body. That could be a partial or complete, but it's a tear. An amputation really refers more to a limb, so a, a part of a limb was cut off okay so go ahead uh, I'll give you guys a few more seconds write these down if you haven't done so already you need to know the difference